This is Cat Ray coming to you from Cloudy, Delaware. And our project today is Kimber Bell's wonderful patriotic pillow. Can you catch that? Okay. And my first uh, Kimber Bell class was through Chris's shop and it was a Halloween event. Yeah, Sweet Home Hall Halloween. And it was wonderful. I just loved it. They even dressed up in costumes. <clears throat> the Kimber Bell instructions are really clear and easy to follow. And Kristen usually goes through and she makes notes on the different pages. Today we're going to be cutting some of our fabrics. Some of you already know how to cut fabrics, so this will just be an entertainment photo, uh, video for you. But for the ones that need to know how to cut, I'll go through that explanation. When you are cutting your fabrics, you shouldn't go back and forth between two ruler brands. A lot of the ruler brands are not accurate from ruler to ruler. So whatever ruler you use, stick with it, okay? You can also use the guidelines on the mat, but a lot of times they say those are not printed accurately, so they're guidelines rather than accurate measurements. Our first sheet is that. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, and that gives all the cutting instructions on that page and then the cutting instructions on this page. And then we're still having problems with a bird that's trying to come into the room. This page in our booklet shows the different embellishments they use in this project to make it look just like the cover photo. If you don't want to use the leather and the felt, you don't have to do that. Um, you can just back your other fabrics with SF-101 or the Kimberbell's project stabilizer in the back of the fabrics and you'll be fine. And this is their cutting diagram. Okay. Okay, we're, we're learning. We've been retired for 10 years, so we've lost our edge. <laughs> okay, our first fabric is, if you're following along with the kit, the beautiful kit that your best friend's quilt shop has listed, and they also have an embellishment kit. That's great. If you're following along with your own stash, maybe by looking at what we're using, you can find something in your stash. The first fabric listed on this diagram is this gray stripe. Okay. It says it's 1 16th, and you're supposed to be using it for your cherries background cake in the middle layer. It's considered section two for both of those. And <clears throat> we'll be cutting one six and a half by six and a half for the cherries background, and one four and a half by two and a half for the cake middle layer. So from years of experience, I always double check my measurements and I see where my selvage is before I start cutting. This piece measures nine by 11, which is great. And since I'll be using small measurements, I'll be using the small ruler. If I'm using, a, needing a ruler for the borders, I'll go with this because that's more accurate because you're not moving it so many times. Ooh, there goes my water. Okay. I put everything away last night so I don't know where my tools are. So the first thing is find out which side your ruler faces. And we want to cut one six and a half by six and a half, which we can find on this page. Um, I think it's this one, two and a half by four and a half. Yes, it's that right there. You may not be able to see it because of my fat fingers. But it's suggesting to run your fabric, when they show this with the stripe, they're suggesting that's your length of your fabric. So you could cut it this way if it makes more sense to you. The only thing is this is considered directional. So you have to pay attention to how you want your stripes to go on your block. On um, the first sheet, if you look at it, 
I can lose things in a matter of minutes. This isn't one of the best pictures. I can't find the cover photo. Um, <clears throat> where's the cover photos over here? Ah, okay. When I'm referring to the stripes, you see the cake layer here. The stripes are going across the cake. And on the cherry, cherry box, it looks like, I'm looking at it upside down, but it looks like the stripes are going up and down. So you have to determine if that's how you want it. For a cake, I probably would put it across, but if I make a mistake, I'll put it the other way. So here we go. Follow safe rotary cutting, cutting measurements. Um, I'll cut my cake first. How does Kristen do this? Okay. I'll cut my cake first, and my cake is four and a half by two and a half. So I have a little bit of selvage here, so I don't want to include that in my measurements. Four and a half by two and a half. And remember, always double check your measurements. I usually tend to cut it a little bit bigger the first time because that way I can cut it down a little bit. But if you use that method, make sure you have enough fabric. Otherwise you wanna cut exactly. And when you first start a project, you should always change your rotary blade. I didn't do that this time because I didn't think about it. <laughs> okay, so now I have to, to sub cut this into four and a half by two and a half. And it takes me a little bit of time because like I mentioned, I do need to have my cataracts removed. Okay, so did you get that four and a half by two and a half? Okay. And we've cut our first piece. That's our cake layer. Now we need our cherries background and like I said, it appears that the stripes are running up and down, but it really doesn't matter. It depends on what, how you want your pillow. We need it, and it's six and a half by six and a half, so you can turn it at the last minute if you want to. Okay, so let me put it on this side, because I have a nice clean edge on both sides. And six and a half by six and a half. Okay. I had a home ec teacher that really didn't want you to waste fabrics. If you're not worrying about being economical, it's just easier just to go straight across, but then you've ruined a piece that you could use for another block. So I go up two, and I try not to go past. And there's our second block, our second piece for a block. Kristen then puts the pieces we cut in. Oh, this is gonna make noise. Don't do this. Okay. There's two ways. Well, there's many ways to organize it. But this is one way you can organize your pieces. You can you can put a piece of the Kimberbell tape and write block one or whatever. Someone in our group mentioned she never changes the label on the box. She just puts down block one or whatever. And then she writes down in her instructions, which, which that is really for. The other way is these, and this is similar to what Christian uses. They come in a lot of colors. And again, you could write it, you could do it with the Christian's um, labeling technique with the Kimberbell tape. They come with dry erase markers, but Christian said, and, and I agree with her on this, is that I don't want to take a chance of it rubbing off on my fabric. So I tend not to use the fabric markers on them. Not fabric markers, the dry erase markers. Okay. So I'm gonna stop this video and I'm gonna get my Kimberbell tape and label it so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I went and I got the Kimberbell tape in the cute little dispenser available in the Bella box. I didn't put labels on mine. 
And another thing um, that I noticed when I was filming is you shouldn't cut anything with your ruler off the table. I don't know why I was doing that, but I did it. <laughs> okay. So off camera, as they say in the video world, I <laughs> labeled a few of my folders. Block four cherries, block five cake, and block two piece flag. Um, I'll only cut that piece flag, the, the white for the piece flag, and then I'll stop because I have to cut all my fabrics so I can go on the next thing on our schedule, whatever that is. Okay, so the two pieces we cut before this was, those that I forgot to, um, to mention, this is the middle cake layer. And the middle cake layer will go in our block five cake. These pieces have not been bonded yet with the project bonding or the SF-101. Um, if you have a lot of money, you can just take all your fabrics, lay them down on your ironing board, and just lay it all down and fuse them all at once, and it's fast and efficient but it's very expensive. I went through like four yards of fabric on the St. Patrick's Day pillow. So it's more economical, and Kristen showed that in one of her videos, to cut the fabrics first, and then later on bond them with the SF-101 or Kimberbell's uh, backing. So this is my first piece in my cake folder. And this, is the background for my cherries. And when I'm talking about backing them, Christian always advises to back at least the backing piece. You don't sometimes have to back the applique pieces, but I prefer to because you have less puckering. For at least for me, I have less puckering. Some people use Terial Magic. It's a spray that's like best press, only it's on steroids, so it makes it really stiff. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, and we got the cake, so that's the second one. The peace flag, okay. Moving right along, it's this one that always reminds me of my grandmother's flower garden. She had some flowers that, oh no, that's the cherries, it's very pretty. There's another one that they have that looks like a flower garden. But these are the cherries, and we need one fat eighth for a piece flag, short white stripe, section two, and the piece flag, long white stripe, section two. We'll be cutting one piece, two pieces, sorry, two pieces, seven and a half by two, and one piece, 11 by two. Okay, and looking at our cutting diagram, which I moved when I cleaned up before we started again. Oh no. Okay, this is weird. Okay, okay find the cherries find the two measurements. Okay, so it's that one. Okay, so it's showing you again with the long stripe, it's showing you that if you have a long piece of fabric you should run it this way. I tend to cut my fabrics from the right side only because if there's a direction or I want a fussy cut I can see it right from the top. And I should not line it up like that, even though I do that in my own time, because that's very poor rotary cutting technique. You should always have your ruler right on the table. Okay, so we need one 11 by two. So I'll get my long ruler out and cut. And this is a nice straight edge. Okay, so. I think Bill should be cutting. He's more accurate. Okay, there's two inches. And I always look like a spe special person. I shouldn't say that. But I do when I'm cutting things. Okay. I'm going to cut a little bit up because there's a little bit of a salvage there. So that gives me the 11 inches. That gives me 11 inches with no dots or salvage and it's supposed to be cut by two. So I'll cut a little bit over like that. Like I said, if you don't have to worry about money, you could just cut it completely off. 
And this is the tricky part because it's white on white on a white table, so it's harder for me to cut. Okay. Always keep your fingers away from the rotary cutter. If you're afraid of cutting yourself, you can get a little suction cup that fits on there so it doesn't move. There's also rulers that have a little bit of a grippy on the back, so that doesn't, it helps prevent it from moving. So make your first side cut there. See if you're separated, fine. And I cut it a little bit long, so I have to trim it. Building, building like my term, sub cutting. Okay. So there's 11, there's the two. And that's our first piece for our flag. We need another piece for our flag, which is, we need two, seven and a half by two inches. Okay, seven and a half by two. This is like one of those horror movies where you see someone coming up behind someone and you scream, run, run. So. You'll, if you see me make a mistake, you'll be saying, no, no, don't cut it that way. And I won't hear it. So it's sad. So let's see if I've screwed up anything. Um, I've got seven inches there, so I can't, I can't get seven and a half. So let's say, you move it down here. I always have backup plans for all my fabric projects because God knows I make enough mistakes. So if I've made a mistake and I can't get two of these out of here, I'll go to plan B, whatever that is. Okay, so we need two seven and a half by two. Bill's laughing at me because he's he does woodworking and he constantly does very good measurements and they're always accurate and he doesn't have to keep checking and rechecking. Seven and a half. Seven and a half by two. Okay. Seven and a half by two. Oh, I'll be fine. Okay, seven and a half by two. Now, you can either do that, or if you're good at math, <laughs> you can go across four inches. So you can go seven and a half by four, and then you can subcut that. So seven and a half by four. I've lost my plot. Okay. Oh, four. That's what I'm going to do. Four by seven and a half. Right, so now by four. Okay. You shouldn't really cut across from you either. I've developed for a lot of bad habits lately. I have a lot of fabric left, so obviously that has to go somewhere else. And now I'm going to subcut this into two inches. it again. That's why it's always good to start a project with a brand new blade. And my ruler did shift a little bit on that one, but I think it's okay because Kimberbell usually allows a little wiggle room one way or another. So if you're doing miniature quilts, this would be a total no-no. I don't know if you could, if Bill can see that, but I've lost like an eighth of an inch on that one side. So that's, that's not good. Okay, but it's okay for this project. Okay, so now I have these two stripes. I'm gonna put this in my peace flag binder. Okay, I'm gonna take a break now and put these, these videos up and then I'll come down and I'll cut the rest of my fabric, but I won't film it because it would drive Bill crazy. Um, and maybe someone will come to our aid and tell us if there's a tripod you can use with an iPhone. So, I'll see you later. <laughs>